Good evening and welcome to Conversations with a Commissioner. Tonight, our host is Commissioner District 1 Commissioner, Carrie Warren Gully, and she's joined by our special guest, uh, Rapaho County Open Spaces Director, Shannon Carter. And we're here to talk to you about uh, our open spaces programs and about the potential reauthorization of the open space sales and use tax. Uh, we are gonna be talking uh, exclusively about open spaces tonight. So if, if you do have questions about some, some other aspect of county business, uh, we probably won't be able to answer it uh, tonight, but we welcome you to send that question, if you have it, to uh, communications services at arapahogov.com. And uh, most of you will be joining us on the phone. So what you need to know about that is that if you wanna ask a question of the commissioner, uh, of Director Carter or of either of our two special guests, which are who are both from uh, Commissioner Warren Gully's district, you can dial star three and that'll put you through to an operator who will put you in a queue to ask, ask your question. Uh, before we do that, we are gonna uh, see a presentation from Director Carter about our open spaces programs, about how reauthorization works and about uh, the many things that we've been able to accomplish with the tax over the past uh, 17 or so years. Um, also, if you're watching online, uh, you can type in a question to the comments box. Uh, we do tend to have more uh, phone visitors to these conferences. Um, and uh, with that in mind, there is a PowerPoint presentation. We're gonna be throwing a lot of numbers and statistics and facts at you. If you do wanna see the PowerPoint, uh, this a recording of this event will be available within about 24 hours on our website. So with that, I will introduce Commissioner Carrie Warren Gully. Well, welcome to everybody, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. You know, as we've learned during this pandemic, we have uh, learned over the course of this pandemic that open space, trails, parks, and our outdoor spaces have really very much supported our quality of life. It's been so fun to see our neighbors and our families and our young people enjoying the outdoor spaces in our natural world. And it's very important here. And that is why we're here to talking with you this evening. In Arapahoe County, we've really spent the last two decades working to build and maintain and enhance these experiences through our open spaces with our assets and our maintenance. These open spaces in Arapahoe County are funded by an open space sales tax which is one quarter of one cent tax on retail sales in the county. And that what that has generated over the past four uh, years since 2004. The county uses this funds to uh, fund our open spaces directly. And we also share it with our municipalities, special districts, and many different interested organizations that work on the local level to bring these funding uh, opportunities to the most local level as possible. As a direct result of the revenue stream, Arapahoe County now owns and maintains 15 parks and open spaces across the county, spanning more than 5,000 acres, four trailheads, and 20 different miles of trails. Voters have approved a reauthorization of the tax in 2011, and the tax is set to expire again in 2023. And with that deadline in mind, the Board of County Commissioners is considering whether to send a ballot, a ballot measure to the voters this fall that would ask for another reauthorization. That is why we're here tonight to show you how important open space funding works and to talk about the benefits for our, our communities and for our residents. So after Shannon Carter goes through his presentation, we're going to hear from a couple of very, friend, very good friends of mine, uh, a few local officials about their experiences with the county's open spaces assets. And then we're going to open it up to you all for questions. So thanks again for being here. And I would like to introduce Shannon Carter, who heads up our open space program. Thanks for being here, Shannon. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, welcome everyone. And I'd like to just give you a little bit of an overview of our open spaces program. 
As uh, Commissioner Warren Gulley mentioned, it is uh, funded by the quarter cent or quarter of a percent uh, sales and use tax. And so we're really going to be talking a little bit about uh, what it does, uh, how it's benefited our community. And then, of course, uh, we're going to drill down a little bit to uh, some of the various areas within your area. Uh, what we mainly focus in on is an outdoor recreation program. Uh, we use the open space sales and use tax as well as uh, partner agencies to build and maintain walking, biking, and hiking trails along the uh, throughout the county from the uh, Mary Carter Greenway to along the South Platte River to uh, the Highline Canal to the Cherry Creek uh, Regional Trail and even the eastern part of uh, the metro area, uh, the newly completed High Plains Trail, which is the trail along uh, E-470. So that's one of the main things that we uh, participate in. We also enhance and build uh, neighborhood and regional parks. Uh, again, the various parks throughout the uh, urban area, as well as uh, parks out in the eastern part of uh, the county, uh, town of Strasburg and some of the other uh, uh, communities that are out in the eastern part of the county. We also are focused in on environmental protection and restoration. We preserve uh, natural areas as well as heritage areas, of which we have two, uh, both the county fairgrounds and the historic 17 mile house, which is 17 miles by stagecoach uh, from uh, that point to downtown Denver. Uh, that's located uh, right off of Parker Road. Uh, just north of the county line, uh, just kind of south of Broncos Parkway. So if you ever had a chance to uh, go into that area, uh, we welcome you to come on in and uh, see the historic house as well as the farm park that, sur that surrounds it. Next slide, please. As uh, Commissioner Warren Gully mentioned, the county has about 15 different parks uh, and uh, trailheads within the urban area of uh, the county western part of the county. This is uh, kind of a little bit of a map as far as where those parks are located. Um, as you can tell, most of them are along the Cherry Creek uh, corridor. Uh, some of them are a little bit north, uh, surrounded by both Denver and Aurora. And so these are parks that are owned and operated by Arapaho County. So we've got uh, close to 5,000 acres that are under direct management. Next slide, please. This gives you an idea as far as some of the eastern properties that I uh, mentioned earlier. If you look over to the right of your screen, that's the Rich Mill Ranch open space, which is close to the town of Deer Trail. Uh, it's got a number of uh, different uh, miles of trails. It's got uh, parking for horse trailers. So there's a lot of equestrian use as well as uh, hiking and, uh, and uh, walking uh, trails along there. The middle part of your screen is our largest holding, which is our middle Bijou uh, properties and the Mule Gulch properties. And those are very interesting in a sense that it uh, maintains our agricultural heritage. We keep those into agricultural production. They do hay and, and uh, alfalfa, as well as uh, other types of grassland uh, type uh, farming in that area. Uh, the hash marks that, that you see in the, the maps are our conservation easements, and we'll talk a little bit about what those are and how they benefit our program in, in a minute. If you move over to the left part of your screen, we have uh, bookend properties, both the Kiowa North open space as well as the Kiowa South open space. The Kiowa North open space, we're just starting a, a uh, master planning process uh, to uh, really guide the development of that uh, particular open space, which will mainly focus in on, of course, uh, shelters, equestrian use, uh, bird watching, all kinds of uh, uh, really uh, being able to uh, go into some of the natural areas. And of course, as with all of our Eastern properties, part of it will stay in agricultural production for uh, things like uh, grazing and so, uh, those that's uh, has two two purposes, both um, being able to keep an eyes and ears on the property, but also uh, to help in the maintenance of. It. Next slide, please. And so, really, when you start thinking about the impact of the program throughout the years, as Commissioner Warren Gully mentioned, 
the pass was taxed in two, or excuse me, the tax was passed in 2003, November. And so we started collecting the revenue in 2004. And so from that point on, we've been able to accomplish quite a bit. Uh, for example, 70 miles of trails have either been built or improved throughout the county. 168 park projects and heritage projects. So we've touched, uh, again, parks from the western part of the county all the way to the eastern part of the county. 168 uh, projects that we've either improved or purchased or built. And so quite an impact to our community from that perspective. And as I mentioned, 31,000 acres of property has been uh, preserved. Either sometimes uh, it's been a fee simple, that is uh, the agency or the county owns the property, but the vast majority of it is what I re referenced earlier, conservation easements. Now those easements is where the um, uh, agency or the county or would buy up the development rights to make sure that that property uh, the conservation values of that property remains, or the agricultural purpose of that property remains. And so uh, that's how we uh, conserve a large landscape level um, um, pieces of property. And then of course, uh, we also focus in on heritage and education. Through the fairgrounds, we hold a number of different uh, community events, uh, uh, all kinds of uh, different activities, the 4-H programs, uh, as well as uh, being able to do a small acreage education uh, through our CSU extension program, our horticultural and agricultural um, uh, instruction. So uh, that's part of the education purpose of the department, as well as environmental education and restoration through our partners. We partnered quite a bit with the Mile High Flood Districts, the Southeast Metro Stormwater Authority, to really do a number of restoration projects to make sure that our riparian areas and certainly our waterways and uh, creeks are restored in a healthy uh, manner. Next slide, please. And so really, when you start thinking about some of the, in, the impacts, as I mentioned before, we do that through conservation easements, through riparian corridor restoration. Now, what we mean by that, uh, this, uh, this picture really illustrates that, uh, along the creeks and along the uh, various riverbeds, uh, there's always um, you know, trees and underbrush and those types of uh, uh, flora and fauna. And so what we've done is we've uh, partnered with um, you know, these flood districts for flood control, for bank stabilization, to really restore that natural environment. Some of the advantages of that is, of course, not only environmental uh, restoration and preservation, but also for flood control and being, being able to stabilize the soil over in that area. But they also make great wildlife corridors. So for uh, the wildlife in the areas, of course, it's almost like a super highway for them uh, because it's uh, uh, unfettered access to water as well as being able to get from one place to another. So we see a lot of uh, our um, uh, wildlife in these uh, natural areas. And then we've also done quite a number of recreational and safety improvements. Uh, and you can really see that in uh, the work that we've done with the, uh, along the Highline Canal. We've done a number of uh, different projects that improve the safety by, as opposed to getting across major intersections, trying to go a traffic light or, or what have you, we've, done, we've built a number of underpasses. Most notably uh, was just recently completed the underpass along the Highline Canal at Colorado Boulevard and Hampton. You can now get underneath both of those busy intersections but without going through this, the surface streets. But that's not the only one we've done. We've done an underpass along uh, uh, the Highline Canal at Iliff Avenue. Uh, we've also done one uh, out east uh, close to Gun Club and, uh, and Quincy Avenue. Uh, and so, and of course, we have one that's under construction now at Mississippi and Parker Road. So we've done a number of uh, recreational safety improvements all up along the uh, western part of the county. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have an active grazing program and, and farming program that keeps these uh, properties and agricultural production for 
food production as well as the economic viability of our Eastern communities. Next slide, please. And all of this we've done with this open space sales and use tax. Now, the resolution calls for us to, as Commissioner Warren Gully mentioned, for us to share part of that, uh, that revenue with our local communities. The cities, towns uh, are able to receive 50% of the revenue that we collect based upon population. So larger uh, cities get a larger share, smaller cities a smaller share. But uh, again, they use those to uh, enhance their parks, their trails, and their open spaces. And if you look at this uh, leaf, uh, down towards the bottom, the 26.66% is for acquisition and development. That's the money that we used for these uh, joint projects or the uh, partnership projects that I spoke of earlier. There's also 12% of the revenue that we receive. That's uh, We do an annual grant program. So cities, towns, and special districts with a recreational purpose can apply for grants up to you know, $500,000, uh, to be able to do park trail projects in their community. The 4.1% is for our designated heritage areas that I spoke of earlier, the fairgrounds and the um, 17 mile house. And there's a cap on what we can use for administrative purposes. The 4% uh, is the most we can use for administration and 3.24% is what we use to maintain our parks and trails. Next slide, please. And so over the life of the program, this is kind of our report card. Uh, of course, since uh, that time when it first started in 2004 up until 2020, we've uh, collected over almost $360 million. And uh, we've distributed almost $257 million directly to the communities through the share back, that is the 50% that we spoke of earlier. The grants, that's the 12%, almost $43 million, over $44 million in uh, grants that we've done in the life of the program. And then of course, as I mentioned, we have a number of joint projects. That's where the county uses parts of its money to partner with uh, the cities, towns, uh, special districts such as Mile High Flood Districts, uh, Southeast Metro, Stormwater Authority, and other uh, special districts to do regional type projects. When I mentioned about some of the underpasses, we've also partnered with Great Outdoors Colorado, uh, CDOT and others to be able to really get those safety improvements funded and actually uh, put into place. And so 71% of the money that's uh, the revenue that's been collected actually has gone back into the community, which is a great track record when you think about it. Next slide, please. But what about locally? Well, as uh, <laughs> this is a great picture because who would have thought that you'd be able to do um, uh, surfing on the Platte River? Well, that was one of those uh, regional projects that we partnered with City of Inglewood, with uh, South Suburban and, and many others to really make sure that that happens. In that same area, of course, we also did the trail on the east side of uh, the Platte River. So we've done a number of different projects that really uh, improve our quality of life and improve uh, the recreational opportunities in your com local community. Next slide, please. This is another example of one of our park projects that we uh, certainly uh, want to uh, acknowledge. And again, we've had 168 different uh, uh, playgrounds improvements, uh, uh, park acquisitions and park improvements. So uh, it really is uh, something that uh, you can see, feel, and touch. Next slide, please. And so what's happening now? Well, during this uh, particular time frame, over the last year and a half, we know, as, uh, as Mr. Warren Gully mentioned, that when the tax was passed in 2003, there was a 10-year sunset. So it was due to expire in 2013. Well, in 2011, the Board of County Commissioners put a question to the voters in 2011 as far well as whether they would extend the tax for another 10 years. 
And so that, that tax or that um, measure passed. And so the tax is due to expire in 2023. And so over the past year or so, we've updated our open space master plan. And during that process, we've done a number of different surveys, um, both telephone surveys, uh, phone surveys, written surveys, online surveys to really uh, get information and input from our constituents as well as our citizens to see how impactful this uh, program has been in your community. We've also engaged uh, in a polling, so polling, polling of uh, likely voters. Uh, our citizen advisory board, uh, which we uh, refer to as OSTAB, has done a lot of outreach, listening to our constituents, our, our partner agencies. We've established a reauthorization committee, and that committee consisted of two of our citizen advisory board members, as well as two of our commissioners, to really take a deeper dive into the program, see what uh, the types of impacts it's had, uh, some of the challenges that it's faced, with the goal towards making recommendations and discussing options with the Board of County Commissioners as they start to make a decision to uh, reauthorize the program. And of course, we've done things like this. That is, uh, we've had conversations with the commissioners in the various uh, districts. We've done presentations to various city councils and special district boards to really highlight and get from them in regards to how the, the tax has impacted their programs and their citizens. And so the Board of County Commissioners will decide this month whether to refer to, in November, a, a question to the voters in regards to uh, reauthorizing the tax. Next slide, please. These are some of the things that we've heard from our citizens, either through the polling or through the surveys. Uh, certainly, people have uh, really expressed their appreciation for the impact that the tax and the program has had in their community. Uh, again, people value what's been done. They certainly look to the future. One an interesting uh, point that uh, we heard over and over again is the fact that not only do people appreciate what we have, but they also want to maintain what we have at a quality and a high level. So that message came across pretty clear in regards to uh, making sure that the spaces and the places that we have are in good repair and are well maintained. So this gives you a, a little bit of a, an, or a taste for how people feel about the program. Next slide, please. So what are some of the things that uh, this small subcommittee were recommending? Well, one of the first things is, of course, the fact that uh, this share back program where 50% goes to our local communities, uh, they're recommending no changes to that to make sure that that continues on because certainly a number of uh, different agencies and programs are really dependent upon uh, this uh, revenue source. No changes to the grant program, that 12% program that we spoke of earlier, where districts and, and other organizations can apply for uh, grants for improvements uh, to their parks and trails. They also inc recommended increasing the amount that's allocated towards maintenance for both the cities and towns and also the county. Because once again, we heard loud and clear that we want to make sure that the places and the spaces that we have are in good repair, that we're really taking care of what we have. Also, of course, uh, as a result of uh, the conversations, many people feel that, we sh that the board should refer the measure to the 2021 November ballot uh, in order to, again, steward, maintain, and improve our open spaces network. Next slide, please. So what happens next and how can you be involved? Well, what happens next is that uh, we certainly want to welcome any questions either in this forum or as Luke mentioned, you can uh, write an email. We have already uh, actually received an email earlier about some of the things that are important to uh, one of our citizens in regards to uh, parks, trails and open space. As I mentioned, the Board of County Commissioners will be uh, taking up this question uh, 
uh, later on this month, I believe uh, next week is when it's scheduled, uh, to, as far as whether to refer it to the voters. And then, of course, you can really show your support by utilizing your spaces. Enjoy the parks, trails, and open spaces. And of course, let us know how you feel about uh, these amenities. Next slide, please. So really, thank you for not only uh, your support, but also we want to go on to this discussion. So let's uh, give our attention back to Luke. All right, thanks, Shannon. That's a lot of great info. Um, before we uh, meet our special guests, uh, I wanna remind everybody, if you have a question and you're on the phone, you can dial star three and that'll put you through to an operator. We have one lined up here. I think I'm gonna go to that one first before we meet our guests, because I think it's for Shannon. Um, before doing that, however, I would like to ask a polling question of everyone on the phone. And if, if you are joining us on the phone, you uh, please uh, respond with, by pushing the following buttons. On a scale of one to five, how likely are you to recommend living in Arapahoe County to someone else? Press one if you're very likely, press two if you're somewhat likely, press three if you're neutral, press four if you're somewhat unlikely, and press five if you're very unlikely. So once again, uh, how likely are you to recommend living in Arapahoe County to someone else? One is very likely, two is somewhat likely, three is neutral, four is somewhat unlikely, and five is very unlikely. Um, and one thing, uh, so again, if you, if you want to ask a question, dial star three, I'll put you, that'll put you through to an operator. If you're watching us online, you can uh, type a question into the comments box and we can see it on our dashboard here. Um, I also wanted to mention, Sh uh, Shannon mentioned Rich Mill Ranch is one of the properties out east that we uh, manage. And uh, we have a, a 5K walk run event uh, on Saturday the 14th, uh, which is uh, the third of four of those type of events that we're doing throughout the year uh, that are scattered sort of around the county. Obviously, they're, you know, as walk, walk slash runs, they're open space events, and it gives you an idea of, of the variety of what we, what we offer there in addition to the county fair and the, the parks and trails and that kind of thing. Uh, for more information about how to register for that, just go to ArapahoeCountyFair.com and that'll teach, get, uh, give you everything you need to know. And uh, so this question uh, is from a caller, and this is Heather from Inglewood who has a question for Shannon. So uh, Heather, go ahead, you are live. Hi, um, I hope everybody's doing well this evening. Um, one of the recent town halls that I listened to, and I've been listening to them, uh, you know, through the last year with COVID and every, on numerous subjects, um, somebody had mentioned that we're getting millions from uh, stimulus and that it was going to be used for Arapahoe County Parks and Rec. And I'm wondering why would you want to up the tax when you're going to use the stimulus given to the state of Colorado for our beautiful Parks and Recs, which I can tell you I have family and it is absolutely beautiful, Arapahoe County, your parks and all the trails everything that's going on. But hearing that, that's where those funds are going to be allocated. Why would you want to up the tax? I'm not a... Sorry. Uh, so, Shannon, can you clarify the difference between the stimulus money and the tax revenue? Certainly. The uh, current tax revenue, of course, is uh, the quarter cent that uh, was voted in, as I mentioned, back in uh, 2003. And that's really focused in on parks, trails, and open space. Uh, the stimulus money that um, we've, uh, that's kind of still in the works, is really focused elsewhere. Now, there may be components to uh, that that would benefit uh, some of our uh, areas, but uh, our program is really focused more on utilizing that tax. And the reauthorization is not increasing the amount uh, that's uh, as far as the tax rate, uh, it's basically holding it consistent and steady. So we're not uh, looking at increasing uh, the current tax. We're basically keeping it uh, the same. So uh, we're just really asking to renew or continue uh, to receive that same amount. Uh, as far as, uh, again, the stimulus is uh, somewhat separate. It's going to be used for a number of different areas, uh, uh, such as the CARES Act and the uh, American Rescue Act. Uh, there's a whole list of uh, uh, 
uh, things that uh, the county is looking at on using that money for. But uh, really, our, our program is going to be focusing more on utilizing the existing uh, tax and the existing revenue. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, and and CARES and ARPA money, uh, but which are the two relief federal relief funds, are they have very specific COVID uh, oriented requirements, um, and and of course they would be, you know, be a fraction of the revenue that the tax provides. So as Shannon outlined in the presentation. So uh, thank you for that question. Uh, again, star three, if you're on the phone and you want to ask one, uh, we have some lining up in the comments box. But before we do that, uh, we want to meet Commissioner Warren Gulley's special guest. So go ahead, Commissioner. Great. Thank you so much, Luke. And um, as we said, before we open it up to discussion, I would like to introduce a couple of special guests that I have here this evening. Uh, one is Susan Pye, who is the chair of our South Suburban Parks and Recreation District. And two is Scott Malin, who is mayor pro tem of the Littleton City Council. And of course, we have a lot of really wonderful partners in District 1 that work with us in open spaces. And I wish all of them could have been here this evening. But I think this evening's discussion will give you a very good feel for how we partner not only with our cities and municipalities, but with our special districts like South Suburban Parks and Rec. So I would like to welcome you both to this evening's conversation. And I have really a similar conversation for both of you. So to start, let's start with Susan. Um, the South Suburban Parks and Recreation District has received more than $10.7 million from the sales and use tax since 2004 via grants and joint projects and sharebacks. Can you talk a little bit about um, what, what these funds have enabled your organization to do with your open space assets and programs? I can do that. But first, thank you for having me here tonight with you. So from South Suburban, the folks at home and new people to the other area, South Suburban Park and Recreation District is a park and recreation provider for Arapahoe County communities of Littleton, Sheridan, Beaumont, Columbine Valley, Valley and Western Centennial, among others. South Suburban owns and manages more than 100 parks and open spaces and over 100 miles of trails serving a population of over 160,000 people, most of whom live in Arapahoe County. The grants we have received from Arapahoe County open spaces since its inception have allowed us to make improvements to those parks, trails, open spaces located in the county. This includes things like improvements on our playgrounds, drinking fountains, trails and recreational opportunities like pickleball or tennis courts, basketball courts, multi-purpose fields for soccer and football, and other sports as well as baseball and softball fields. It allows the district to invest in safety and accessibility improvements to our public spaces and to ensure that they are accessible, inclusive, and safe for all who use them. Every year, we try to renovate 10 to 12 parks, and many of those projects are in partnership with the grant funding from Arapahoe County Open Spaces. We also regularly work hand-in-hand -hand with our municipal parties, and those partners and cities will often contribute part of their Arapahoe County open space share back funds to elevate the park improvements that South Suburban makes in their communities each year. Any questions there? You know, Susan, I think that's a great start. And um, I, I wish so much that I have had the opportunity to, to try my hand at pickleball. And, and it seems to be the up and coming of way of being outside and recreating together. And I'm, I, 
I promise I'm going to try it sometime soon. But it sounds like you all work with a lot of partnerships in, with our municipalities and other organizations. I do know that um, we have done some upgrades to our playgrounds in Littleton Public Schools. And that has been a wonderful partnership with you all and also with um, Littleton City Council. And so I'm going to ask uh, Councilman Malin the same question. Uh, you have the city of Littleton has received almost $23.7 million in these share back funds from the open space. And I wondered if you might share with us too a little bit about um, how this money has given you the ability to work with open space assets and programs that you all highlight. Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure to talk about that. And uh, thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, so Littleton in many ways is a community that is well known for its open space. South Platte Park, for example, is one of the largest natural open spaces within an urban or suburban area anywhere in the nation at almost 900 acres. And quite frankly, without uh, the share back and without, uh, excuse me, other funds uh, from the open spaces tax, uh, we wouldn't be able to do nearly as much with our open space uh, as we are able to do. Uh, for just a couple of recent examples, um, we uh, are unique, I'll say, among front range communities in that we don't have a water resources master plan. Uh, most communities along the Front Range have had one of these for uh, almost 50 years. Uh, unfortunately, Littleton has never developed one, and we've just applied for and, and fortunately been awarded a, a grant to the Open Spaces Tax Program that's going to pay half of the approximately $140,000 price tag for us to identify our water resources and decide how uh, to efficiently use them for our community, uh, especially in light of the fact that we are uh, residents of the desert west, right? Uh, so a very, very important thing that our city is going to be able to do because of uh, the open space uh, tax dollars. Um, similarly, right, without the um, money that comes from uh, the open space tax, we wouldn't be able to provide operations and maintenance funding for South Platte Park. Um, annually, we receive approximately $235,920 uh, that goes to operations and maintenance uh, down at the park. And uh, that's a lot of money for our community. And uh, we simply wouldn't be able to maintain uh, that asset and provide the high level of programming that we are able to if we didn't receive that money. So uh, as both an elected official uh, and as a citizen of Arapahoe County, uh, I am absolutely hoping I get to vote in November to reauthorize uh, the open spaces tax. Scott, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. And, and again, I think it's really a, um, a great testament to the work of these open spaces funds. It was your mass, water master plan is a little bit of a different idea of how we would spend these funds. And it gets us to think a little bit outside of the box, both as open space folks but also for our residents to really be thinking about how important it is that we do have a master plan for our water resources and how we work to maintain those. And maintenance certainly is a very big part of what we do with these funds, because not only do we want to acquire new properties, but we also want to make sure that we're maintaining them and keeping them wonderful for our future generations to come. So I know that you all have, have a little bit uh, highlighted some specific projects, but that was my next question. Um, Susan, did you have any other specific projects that we've worked in partnership with that you'd like to highlight? I do, and I have just a little bit of information about how we work with the grants that we get from you. And so with our $11 million since 2004, 
we've had a staff that has worked to leverage that Arapahoe County grant funds with other sources like lottery funds, private foundations, private donors, to, in to ensure that the taxpayer funds get even further and provide a better improvement to our parks and open spaces. A recent example of this is our South Bridge Park in Littleton that was awarded funding this year for future construction. Littleton and South Suburban each contributed $150,000. Arapahoe County Open Spaces committed to $500,000, and a local foundation, who was asked not to be named, contributed another $100,000. A project that would have been 150,000 with just South Suburban funds became a 900,000 full park re renovation project that would have taken multiple phases and many years to accomplish without Arapahoe County open space funds. In the South Bridge Park, as an example of what we will be doing, with those funds, we will be replacing a 20-year-old playground with two age-specific playgrounds for tots and bigger kids, build a new ball field, and replace a 30-year-old picnic shelter and the other amenities like benches and shade and improve the accessibility at that park for all people. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. And, and as you said, it, it's, this is the power of partnerships and this is the power of having a little bit of funding. Although in our budget and our home budgets, it doesn't sound like a little bit, but in the budgets of um, maintaining and operating our wonderful outdoor spaces, it's, it's a little bit of a money that then became a lot and the power of those partnerships that you were talking about and leveraging those funds. And I do know that it's, it's an example of what a lot of our partners talk about in leveraging funds in order to go after private and um, public partnerships. So it sounds like a great project. How, lo how long, do you know how long that's gonna take to build out, Susan? Um, you know, if it wasn't in the COVID-19 era, we would have yes. that probably done this year, but we don't know how we'll get all those supplies yet. So it's it's on our budget for this year, and we will continue until we get it done. So we're hopeful that it goes quickly. Oh, me too. That's such a great project for that area. Thank you so much. And it, it, it gives testament to what we're talking about in maintaining our, our, our parks and open spaces and trails because a 30 year old picnic shelter may need a little bit of updating by now and certainly a 20 year old uh, playground does as well. So Scott, I, I know you mentioned a couple, you, you mentioned the um, master plan for your water resources. Do you have another um, maybe specific project that you've been excited to work on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned early on the $23.7 million that Middleton has received uh, from the open spaces tax since uh, 2003, which, you know, for a community of our size, is just a tremendous amount of money. Um, and it's enabled our city to do all kinds of exciting things over the years. Um, looking into the future, one of the things that I'm very excited to use some open space uh, tax dollars for is improvements uh, at Reynolds Landing along the South Platte Park. Uh, as people who uh, use the Mary Carter Greenway Trail uh, may know, this is a part of the river that uh, in many ways is unsafe for uh, people in the water, tubing, et cetera. Uh, and it's also underdeveloped uh, in terms of the health of that riparian corridor, the plant community, uh, and so on. And uh, some, of the, um, some of the design that we're starting to see for the future Reynolds Landing improvements are just gorgeous and will be uh, just a tremendous, uh, tremendous addition uh, to our open spaces program in Littleton. Um, it's those kinds of things uh, that the open space money has always helped Littleton uh, achieve. Thanks, Scott, for mentioning that. That's actually one of my favorite projects, too, because 
you know, we all live in this area and the South Platte definitely seems to attract a lot of us. I have anglers in my household that love being able to fish on the South Platte as well as many, many, many of my friends who are, are avid bikers who bike from Chatfield all the way down to Denver along that corridor. It also kind of brings testament, Scott, to what you were talking about, that we partner, not, not only is Littleton in this aspect, in this space, but also Sheridan and Inglewood and Denver are part of this whole corridor of talking about how we bring people to the South Platte, how we bring them there safely, um, whether you're biking or pedestrian or um, in, in your car, as well as um, that extended space, even outside of the city of Littleton that goes into all the way up into Denver, as we've said. So it's, it's really an asset in, in our community that, I think people from the beginning probably wouldn't have even been able to visualize what this could potentially be. Fortunately, somebody did and great leaders did, and we have a really amazing asset for us. So before I turn it over to questions, Susan, was there anything more you kind of wanted to add about how this supports our quality of life and, and work here in Arapahoe County? Susan, are you muted or? Oh, sorry. Yes, I was. I was trying to be quiet. So let me try again. <laughs> we are all Coloradans. And whether you were born here or you moved here yesterday, we all value the outdoors and the ability to get outdoors and enjoy nature. The Denver area continues to grow and attract people. And in doing so, it's more important than ever that people have places to escape and recreate close to where they live. We've seen through the pandemic just how important outdoor spaces are for mental health of youth and adults. We've seen a record use of trails and parks in the last year and a half. Our parks open space and access to recreation and leisure space are significant components to maintaining our residents' high quality of life. Arapahoe County Open Space, through the sales tax, has been able to help our organization and our communities we serve to be ensured that they will have great public spaces. We think together we work better for our community, and I look forward to the future of the program. Wonderful, Susan. Thank you so much. It's, it, it is something that has been very highlighted uh, by the past 18 months, and we certainly appreciate our partnership with you and are looking forward to continuing that. So, Scott, I will hand it over to you. Do you have any closing words about how important this is to our quality of life here in the western part of Arapahoe County? Yeah, I think it's important. Can't can't be overstated. Um, you know, in my life, I've been fortunate enough to travel all over the world and to spend a whole lot of time uh, in wilderness, uh, including walking the entire 500 mile length of the Colorado Trail, uh, which is a wilderness trail uh, through the Rocky Mountains. And I can say sincerely that one of my favorite places on Earth is the East Trail down at South Platte Park uh, because uh, it's a wilderness experience so close to home. Over the years, um, I have had close encounters with so many different kinds of wildlife from coyotes to golden eagles to bald eagles to fish to snakes and on and on. And uh, the aesthetic and spiritual experience you get to have uh, when the sun's setting down there or when it snows is absolutely uh, peerless uh, to the point that, you know, Colorado's own John Fielder uh, has taken some of his uh, very beautiful landscape uh, photos from the East Trail down at South Platte Park. Um, it's absolutely remarkable 
that we're able to have resources like that. And uh, without the open spaces tax, they either don't exist or they can't be maintained in the condition that they deserve. So that's what it means to me. Great, Scott. Thank you. And I know you're a call. You're a Littleton native, aren't you, Scott? I am. I'm proud to say, yeah. That's wonderful. So it's been fun, I bet, for you to see the whole development of that South Platte Parkway area. It's it's just fantastic. So um, without further ado, Luke, I'm going to hand it back over to you and take questions from our community. Great. Thank you, Commissioner, and thanks to our guests. Um, that, that, was, that was really valuable information. Um, we do have a couple questions lined up. If you're if you're on the phone or watching us online, you can dial dial star three on your phone to go to an operator. You can type a question into the comments box if you're watching online. I'm going to ask one quick poll question, one se a second poll question. Uh, how satisfied are you about your interactions with the Arapahoe County government? Press one if you've been very satisfied. Two if you've been somewhat satisfied. Three if it's if you're neutral or it's not applicable because you haven't had that many interactions with us four if you've been somewhat dissatisfied, and five if you're very dissatisfied. So once again, uh, how satisfied have you been about your interactions with the Arapahoe County government? One is very satisfied, two is somewhat satisfied, three is neutral or not applicable, four is somewhat dissatisfied, and five is very dissatisfied. So thank you for answering that. We compile this data and use it to improve our efforts uh, on your behalf. So um, to, the, to the points that Scott and Susan made, um, one of the revelations to me in this series of events is how many underrated aspects there are to open spaces and what this what this tax uh, pays for. Um, one of the one of our guests on a, on a previous call who's from Aurora talked about the the inner, inner city parks in Aurora. You know, we think of the trails as being out in the wilderness. You know, there's no cars around, no people around, that kind of thing. But the the stuff that's happening within the city limits at, at our, in our various communities is really uh, an important part of this that I think not as many people realize is a, a huge component of our, our, uh, our open spaces programs and assets and that kind of thing. Um, Scott also mentioned water, which of course is a gonna be a hot topic in, a, in any number of categories in the coming years. Um, one of the online questions we have, I'm gonna get this one answered first. Uh, uh, Samantha is asking, does the county have anything to do with the water contamination recovery uh, if you've seen in the news this week, uh, there was some E. coli found in the Englewood water supply for part of the city. I believe it's zone one of that city. And if you go to their website, you can see a map of what zone one consists of. Um, so they're, they're on a boil advisory because of that. Um, our county uh, is monitoring it, but uh, and the commissioner can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're, uh, beyond that, we don't have a specific role. I can tell you, that uh, if you want to get more information about that, you can go to the Englewood County or the Englewood Community website, which is englewoodco.gov. So englewoodco.gov, and that has a whole page about what's going on there. Uh, they also have a call center, which is it's 303-762-2365. So obviously that's a concerning development, but I think they're handling it. And um, Commissioner, that's that's I framed the the board's role correctly in that, right? We're just monitoring. That is correct. I know that our um, operational emergency management team has been working very closely uh, with the city of Inglewood. And I have to say, I've been very impressed with how um, honest and forward facing the city of Inglewood has been about this. They right away got right on it. Um, I know that they've been distributing water from the city center in case people have a need. So um, we are working in partnership with them, but um, certainly the city of Inglewood is the best way to reach out and get more information about that. And of course, if, if we hear anything that needs to be disseminated, we're helping, you know, we help their communicators share with the community, with, you know, the area and that kind of thing. So keep an eye on that. Um, next question is for, I guess, Scott and Shannon. Uh, it's from Robert. And he's he's asking, does does Littleton also get funding for open spaces uh, from Jefferson County? Yes, this is Scott. Scott is saying, yes, we do. We have a small part of uh, the city that falls within um, Jeffco, uh, so we do. Um, and for example, 
uh, in South Platte Park, we get approximately, I think, 95000 a year from Jeffco Open Space. Uh, so, yeah, we do. Um, and, and I know Shannon has talked many times in, in these events about the, you know, for example, the Highline Canal Trail runs across multiple communities. And of course, Commissioner Warren Gully mentioned partnerships. Um, so we, we definitely pool resources when it comes to these assets. Um, Shannon, I have another question for you. Uh, you know, in the suburbs, uh, you know, so in Scott and Susan's areas, uh, there, there's uh, an increase uh, interest in safer access to various things, and, you know, via bike or walking. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of uh, plans are the master plan is looking at in terms of improving access for anything other than cars? <laughs> Thank you, Luke. Yes, uh, we certainly are looking at, and of course, uh, part of that corridor is from the, the Mary Carter Greenway all the way up north to the city of Inglewood. Uh, we've recently completed a study to get better access down into the uh, river as well as the river trails. Uh, it went, it's a pretty extensive study that looked at, uh, you know, busy intersections and ways to improve it and ways to uh, create uh, better access uh, to the river. And so uh, we funded that uh, particular project. And out of that, there are a number of, a list of uh, projects that uh, some of the municipalities such as Sheridan, Inglewood, and Littleton are actually starting to implement to be able to improve uh, river access and make it a little bit more safe. The other thing that we've uh, done as far as a regional project, I kind of touched on it, the, uh, uh, the East Side Trail that's um, near Oxford and uh, going on up to uh, Union uh, Avenue, that helped to relieve some of the stress that was on the trail that was on the west side of the river, uh, because these are very popular trails. And so sometimes uh, there are trail conflicts. And so being able to have a, a trail on both sides of the river kind of helps to ease uh, some of that conflict. So uh, we've actually tried to improve safety in a number of different ways, both the uh, busy crossings, as well as uh, doing some improvements uh, to the trails and having uh, additional trails to be able to, uh, again, balance out or relieve some of the stress. Excellent. Uh, well, that, that exhausts our list of questions from the audience, and it brings us up to the one hour mark. Uh, so I would just like to remind everybody that a recording of this event will be available on our website within about 24 hours. Um, Thank you so much for attending this, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the future, hopefully in person sometime soon. And uh, thanks to our special guests and to Commissioner Warren Gully and Shannon Carter.